While Francis Yeo was growing the YTL conglomerate, Malaysia was implementing controversial economic policies which favored Malays, or Bumiputras. Locked into the Singapore flyer for 30 minutes, Francis Yeo talks about rolling out the world's first nationwide 4G network and answers the tough questions about business ties with Malaysia's former Prime Minister, Mahathir Mohamad. Malaysia is known for its affirmative action, a policy that favours the ethnic Malays, yet it has not stopped you, an ethnic Chinese, from doing really well. What went right for you? I listed the company in 1986. Uh, I told my father, we must grow together and create the economy. If the economy is too black and white, it's very difficult. Uh, there was a, a, a big economic divide. And listing the company meant at that time giving 30% shares to Bumi Putra. So hopefully they will do well uh, as a, a vested interest uh, in the enlightened self-interest to see you grow. And that worked very well for YTL as we grew. And uh, ever since then, uh, we've grown to be a global company. Now 75% of our revenue is outside Malaysia. What works really well as well is the fact that you know the right people. The right people in high places, not to mention the former Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamed, yes. who did help you along the way. Well, that's not cronyism, as you probably try to allude to. It is not like that. Mahathir actually welcomes uh, entrepreneurship. He's a very clever man. He just knows that the, 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 the private sector are the engines of growth. And he wants the private sector to make money. Be Bumi Putra, or Nam Bumi Putra, or Chinese, or Indian, or Eurasian, it doesn't matter. Why? Because the government will tax him 30% at that time. You know, so if he makes money, the government makes money. But you had a big break back in, I think, 1982, when there was a nationwide power outage, and Mahathir decided, okay, enough is enough. I need someone more reliable to, to get the electricity going in the yes. country. And you were awarded the, uh, the contract yes. to supply power. Yeah, at that time, because uh, Dr. Mahade already acknowledged the prowess of some of our local construction companies. And then he gave us an opportunity when the privatization, he thought of uh, government shouldn't be in business. So let the private sector grow. It. So if they make money, so what? I'll tax him 30%. So it's <laughs> very simple for him. So uh, he encouraged all of us to do that. Yeah. You're known as a very prudent businessman, but also a flamboyant personality. Is there a contradiction in that? Uh, flamboyant because I'm always in the face of people changing and doing business models that have not been done, financing things that have not been done, and always believing in it like an evangelist in it. So it's always in the face of people. People find that flamboyant. But I, I'm just trying to tell the truth and just telling people, give me a break. I know it can be done. It's, quite commonsensical. Just because it's never been done before, why can't we do it? 4G is the same, you know, the 4G spectrum that we have. Unbeknownst to many people, for example, today, Malaysia has the most advanced fourth generation communication network in the world. But how much of a game changer will 4G be? Because you've likened it to be a color TV compared yeah. to a black and white. Yeah, that is phenomenal, you know. The world, in a couple of years, will have smartphones. And smartphones want internet, right? They want a Wi-Fi or internet. And they prefer a 4G, where it's 10 times more powerful than a 3G, right? They don't want a Wi-Fi best effort basis. They want a network that can give the power of the devices to work the way it should work, the apps that are awesome today. But the network around the world is not supporting, actually, Steve Jobs' dreams. Right? We are the first in the world to do that. So given the huge potential of 4G, what will that mean for YTL? Will that change in, uh, in terms of contribution of profit? Yes, I think so. I like all things we've invested. Everything we do in the beginning, people always laugh a bit, ridicule it a bit, knock it a bit. And if it worked, they say, well, it was political connection. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. That has to be Been a reason. Then they've done that it's okay. <laughs> but I, I think this is, to me, very important. My grandchildren's generation would curse us if we had an opportunity to do 4G and we didn't. YTL is just one of few Malaysian companies that have gone global. What is hindering more Malaysian companies from taking the same route? No, I don't think Malaysian companies are being hindered. You talk about uh, Genting, they are very global. Uh, Petronas is a very global company. Uh, Sam Davi is a very global company. So but, not but you can count them. There, there, there's so few of Malaysian companies that have gone global and made an impact on the global scene. 
There will be more. We've set the trend. Many people have set the trend. I think going global, being a trading nation, should be a, a normal thing. But uh, what are the challenges for Malaysian companies when they venture overseas? Well, they they have to have the skill sets and intellectual capital, and they have to invest in the right. They have to understand the rule of law and regulatory framework. And that's something that the YTL, to a certain extent, has done quite well. We, we do businesses in areas where the regulatory framework is very transparent, like Britain, Australia, and Singapore. So that's not a coincidence. We actually thrive in 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 the economies where the regulatory framework, rule of law, is a way of life. And uh, Asia is not like that, unfortunately. So Malaysian businesses are quite used to the old way of. Uh, know who rather than know how and, and they get stuck a bit and then time just passes by some get away with it but mostly uh, most people will not be able to adapt to a changing uh, very big change in the in the world economy today coming up being guided by faith if you do the right thing the results will follow the economic goodies will follow if you do all the right things that is a simple formula YTL Group's Francis Yeo has spent four decades building the company into one of Malaysia's biggest conglomerates. He is also an opera-loving man, known for flying in famous singers whenever there's an occasion to celebrate. Francis Yeo joins us in the Singapore Flyer and tells us about the guiding force in his life, which he believes will also guide future generations. You're known for your business acumen, but you started really young at the age of 24, right after school. At that time, what made you think that you have what it takes, that you can bear all the responsibilities coming your way? My faith in God, I'm a Christian. I suppose we but are But at optimist. 24? I think the moment you become a Christian, you are an optimist already. You think of the long term, you have a sense of eternal life. So these are all the perspectives, the long term ideas of business models, sustainable models. And, and yes, so the confidence was always there. If you do the right thing, the results will follow. The economic goodies will follow if you do all the right things. That is a simple formula. But it takes a lot of discipline to keep focus and stay that way. I want to talk about the next generation. You said much is given, but much is expected. Yes, that's biblical. If you are blessed, then you must give. See, our God is a giving God, so you, whatever you do... They choose to fail for your kids, all five of them. We tell them, you are stewards of the next generation. But things are dynamically changing so much. Technology, digital economy, you guys can handle it much better than us. All right? We build a strong foundation. We can understand building the infrastructure of the engineering side of the digital economy very easily. But the digital economy, the cut and thrust and the change and the language and the bites and all this, the way they speak the new lingo, wow, you guys are more adept at it, you know. So, go... So you're confident your business is in good hands? Very good hands because they are very strong godly foundations. You've yeah. said all your kids must speak three languages. Yeah. The language of God, the language of man, the language yes. of machine. In that order. So, the language of God is to have integrity and morality. And if you, are, you don't have that, Nothing, nothing is sustainable. And then the language of man, you have to articulate. Like if, uh, if you can't speak English properly, you have great ideas, you cannot champion that idea and get all the people to be behind you, it's, it's difficult. And then harnessing technology, that language machine is zero and one. You know, If you cannot handle it, you will never be able to make it. So you have a succession plan? Yes, I have a succession plan. They will have to compete with all the CEOs of the world. And if they make it, they'll be a CEO. How would you like to be remembered? You've done so many things. What's the one thing that you've done that gives you great pride in? Well, I, I don't think about such a being remembered. If you look at our balance sheet, we have uh, in YTR, we say the journey continues. And that's pretty big, big in one sense. Journey continues means I run a good race. I do not drop the baton. That's all I do. I do not say I'm the generation that hits the tip. And then that's it. There's nothing more. This is my legacy and that's it. Right? And there's nothing more to do. There are lots more to do. So my understanding of how I work 
is to tell everybody that our journey continues as long as we are given this baton, don't drop it. Right? Just pass the baton to the next generation and hope that they run with it very well. So I don't think about what I do and how great it is. I don't have the luxury to think of that. Thank you, Francis Gio. Thank you so much for being on High Flyers. Thank you. Pleasure. Right, thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Bye.